I'm Jennifer Sanasti. You're watching News 24 Live. David Parrott and Sebastian Thompson are joining me in studio. Now they are changing the marketing industry in South Africa with their new company, Gravity. Hello. Hi. How are you? are you guys? Very good. All good. good. All good. Good. Cool. So Gravity um, is groundbreaking for the marketing industry here in South Africa. Why don't you tell us why? It's groundbreaking here because traditionally marketing companies um, kind of deal with a lot of softer things and they don't really do a lot of research into exactly why people do what they do. They don't do a lot of research into the actual psychology behind, behind the decisions they make in the environments that they make them. And Gravity, we've, we've uh, taken the learnings from what's going on overseas and we've looked to sort of apply those here in a South African context. Um, there's an, an agency called um, Ogilvy Change in the UK that pioneered the application of behavioral economics, which is this study of how people make decisions. And they looked at applying that to a marketing communication context. And we thought that's a pretty unique approach to how to do marketing. Uh, why don't we give that a go here in South Africa? And so we started Gravity Ideas. Nice. Now you guys look quite young. We are. We are. Both 24 years old. Wow. Yeah. You're putting me to shame right now. <laughs> <laughs> How, how do you pioneer a whole industry at 24 years old? I think it's just a, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just something we've been really fascinated with. Yes. We're really interested in it and we went out into the marketing world and we saw that there was, there was a gap here. This kind of, this thinking, this applying behavioral science to marketing wasn't something that was really being dealt with in the marketing world and we just saw a gap and went through it. So a bit of, a bit of opportunity, of opportunism, and a bit of passion and interest for the field. I think that's the, the combination that got it, got it going. 100% passion all the yeah. way. <laughs> that's how you do it. <laughs> now, how do you apply behavioral science to marketing? That's a good um, question. Okay, so we, we use, we use a, a process mm -hmm. where basically we go to businesses and we turn a business objective into what we call a behavioral objective. So a specific behavior that a client wants to change. Uh, we then go and do ethnographic research, so we go out into the field, immerse ourselves in the field, understand the context, understand the, the kind of the social factors that are involved, the environmental factors, and then you know the kind of the psychology of the, the, the consumer. And then we also collaborate with academics, so we basically, just to think of a project right now, we're working with a, a linguistic anthropologist, you know, so an academia, mm -hmm. so bringing that academic thinking into the marketing world. Um, so that's the kind of research element. On top of that research, we then build behavioral tactics. So tactics to solve that objective, to shift that behavior, um, also known as nudges. I don't know if, if you would be aware of that. And then we then go and test it. So we measure the progress or the performance of these tactics and yeah, test them to see if we've done a good job. Wow. Now, how long does this process take? It varies. We, we like to have a turnaround time of about six weeks normally. So normally about three, four weeks of research, really getting out there, understanding the psychology of this, this decision. And then we build tactics for the next kind of week or so and then test and measure it. And then kind of the idea is to then build on that testing. So change and adapt small things and keep on kind of... Keep learning about yeah, the Yeah, learning uh, yeah, and iterating on it. Awesome. Now tell me about some of the projects you've worked on. How, I guess we want to know what the difference is between yeah. what people are already doing in the marketing yeah, industry sure. and what they're getting with you. So maybe if we can put that into a real world example. I think, I think the, the, the critical problem. thing to, to express about the difference between traditional marketing and what we're doing is it's not necessarily something that's never been done before, never seen mm -hmm. or never heard. The, the most important thing is the collaboration with the academic world right. and how the academic world is making a lot of sort of groundbreaking, doing a lot of groundbreaking research on applied psychology and how people make decisions. And they're really codifying, codifying all the different elements of how we make decisions and like what are the different things that lead us to making mistakes when we make decisions, what's affecting us. And by coding all of that, we can be a lot, we can be a lot more direct with our clients. We can say, here we have, uh, we've identified this behavior. In the academic research, they show that if you apply these things, you will get this change. It's not as cut and dry as that, obviously, because contexts change, but it's a lot closer to 
uh, an advertising agency that would go and say, well, you know, you've got this new product, we're going to try this and we'll see how this works. I mean, there's that famous quote um, from the ad world about Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola say 50% of our advertising works. We're just not sure which 50%. So what we try and do is go, okay, well, let's, let's get down to like exactly what is working, why it's working, and attribute it back to academia. So I think the best, the best example we have of like a really good case study that worked for us was um, the big issue project that we did. Yeah. And I'll let Dave take yeah. you through that one. Um, so basically it was a kind of our first client, very exciting, just started the business. And we wanted to, Big Issue had a problem. The, the kind of, the big problem was that most of their vendors were selling between five and six magazines a day, which at some point wasn't actually enough to cover their transport costs. Yeah. And, uh, which, and basically the Big Issue vendors, they're entrepreneurs. And how the business model works is they buy magazines from Big Issue, they then sell, sell them at a markup. So they have to make a profit in order to you know, survive and actually help their families and that. So we looked at this problem, we thought, how can we increase the sales of these big issue vendors using our kind of behavioral psychological tactics? You know, how and the kind of, our approach was, we first went out and uh, did the ethnographic research. We kind of went out there and stalked the vendors at traffic <laughs> lights, yeah. We just sat there and watched them. And it was a really interesting uh, experience and at the same time maybe a bit depressing because we just saw how drivers were interacting with these vendors. It was very negative, they got very defensive. Um, we actually even made the joke that people were spending more money on re pushing their, their accelerator a little bit forward to disengage with the vendors yeah. and that money could actually, over a, 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 an annual period, actually could be going towards you know, helping these vendors. So yeah, really got out there and understood that dynamic between the driver and the vendors. We then looked at how we, could, how we could change this and actually get people to engage more with these vendors. And the kind of, our focus for this was to look at the bib, the bib that they're wearing. I don't know if you've seen. Those blue bibs. Yes. Yeah. So that was our first kind of project. So basically, we looked at this bib and we thought, how can we make these bibs more engaging using some psychological tactics to do this? And so, yeah, we employed some of the core principles of behavioral science. So we looked at things like goal orientation and personalization. Uh, we got the big issue vendors to understand what their specific goal was and that their kind of personal goal and we got them to handwrite that on the bib so it's a real feeling of like this is my problem you're dealing with me as a person instead of this blue kind of billboard on the side of the road so we employed a lot of behavioral tactics into these bibs uh, we then also partnered with a company called snapscan who i'm sure you're aware of uh, to deal with the, the cash problem because obviously you know one of the big problems is the kind of the higher LSMs aren't dealing with cash as, right. as much as uh, they used to. And so one way to get around this is obviously, you know, digital transaction format. And so we got them involved and the whole thing was actually really successful. The big issue sold out for the first time in over a year. That's great. Yeah. So, the, you know, it wasn't just a pretty bib. There were actually these kind of quantitative um, increases in sales that, that made a real difference. So that was a really exciting project and it really just got us going. 